Hey, it's Ted McGrath. So in this video, I want to talk to you about how successful people think and why it matters. Number one, successful people think in futures. And this is a very important distinction. I find myself from year to year thinking about how do I make a million dollars, two million dollars, three million dollars in terms of increasing my own personal wealth, right? So I'm a multimillionaire right now. And over the last year, I've been thinking about, okay, how do I get my net worth up to this in the next year? But really, successful people think in 10-year time horizons, 20-year time horizons, even 100-year time horizon. So if I was thinking in a 10-year in a time horizon, here's how it changes the game, right? A 10-year time horizon, with the investments I'm looking at today, as I started to look at it, I was looking at a billion dollars, right? In a one-year time horizon, I'm looking at millions of dollars. Now, I only learned this and discovered this about myself by watching successful people who are already making billions. And I started to listen to the way that they thought. Now, I was watching some example the other night on YouTube. I follow this guy, Michael Saylor, a lot. And he was talking about friends that he had who um, owned real estate in New York. And what he said was, um, these friends, when he was talking to them, he said, how long have you owned the real estate? And many of the families have held the real estate for 100 years. And he goes, do you ever sell it? And they go, no, we don't sell it. And he started to think, and he's like, mm, this is interesting. So they own a block of real estate in New York City, which is super, super valuable. So if you own this real estate, why would you ever sell it? And then he started to think to himself, like, why do these people own these pieces of land for 100 plus years? And then how do they not sell it? Like, how do they actually make a living and, you know, pay their bills and live their lifestyle and live in their mansions and do all these things if they're holding on to this real estate and never cashing in on it? Right now, most of us think about cash flow, income, money coming in, but these families, they don't sell their real estate and they don't even cash flow from the real estate they're, that they're holding, let's say in Manhattan. So what they do is, let's say they have hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate. They go to the bank and because they have hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate, they go to the bank and they say, give me a loan for $50 million or $100 million. And they get these really cheap loans from the bank. Now, what's brilliant about this, right? What's so brilliant about this is that they never sell the real estate that's sitting at a hundred millions of dollars in value or even a billion dollars in value. They never sell it. So they never pay taxes on it. And then they go to the bank and they go, give me a loan. And the bank knows that this real estate is so highly valuable that they give them a loan for a very low interest rate because it's not risky. Right? They have an asset that's not risky. So they give them a loan and they say, great, we'll give you a loan for 1% or 2%. In today's environment, you can get loans for 0.75%, right? So they go get a loan of $100 million for like 0.75%. They're paying nothing to get the loan. So when they get the loan, they don't pay taxes on it. When they live off that money that they're getting from the bank, they don't pay taxes on it. They hold on to their real estate, which is leveraged to get money anywhere else that they want to get it. And at the end of the day, they're not paying taxes. Now, it doesn't mean to say that in their business, when they earn income, they're not paying taxes. They're not trying to avoid or escape taxes or break the law. But they have a strategy set up to where they are living this incredible lifestyle. And let me ask you a question. If you could have $100 million of real estate or a million dollar asset, right, and not touch it and let it grow and not pay taxes on it, and you could go borrow money at 0.75% and just pay the interest on that and go live on that money, and allow your asset of a million dollars to appreciate by 20% a year, would you play that game? And the answer is yes. And here's the rest of society who's thinking of it from a totally different perspective that they want to have liquidity and they want to have access to this money and they need to, they need to access it to live on. And so people make money and they accumulate wealth and then they spend it for things that they want to go spend it on. Why not accumulate the wealth and go borrow it? Go borrow from the bank and use their money to live on and let your wealth accumulate a 20% a year if you have the right investments, right? While you're paying 0.75% or 2% out on your loan. This is how successful people think about it. So moving to the digital currency space, what I'm doing with my money today is putting seven figures into, I'm almost at seven figures into the Bitcoin marketplace right now, okay? And so I'm putting money in there to store my wealth in there as a store of value so that as this goes up to hundreds and millions of dollars and potentially my goal is a billion dollars with this investment over a decade, this becomes an asset that is being well known in the mainstream now that eventually I can go to a bank and if I need 
$10 million in the future or $20 million in the future from the bank to make an investment in something else, to live, to buy something. I just go to the bank and I get a loan for really cheap money while this asset over here that's hundreds of millions of dollars is growing and growing and growing and growing. And because I'm not selling it, I'm not paying taxes on it. This is how successful people think. And so we need to start thinking from this perspective. And if you look at the trends of the past, there's so many different reasons why this makes sense to me of putting money into this future of this network of Bitcoin. And the reason it makes sense is because it's another network. You know, we have, uh, you know, Apple who dominates the mobile network. We have Facebook who dominates the social network. We have Amazon who dominates the retail network. These are retail networks or social networks or mobile networks that are virtual. They're the virtual world. They're part of the virtual wave that's taking place in the world. They're already here. Now this is a new money network. So wealthy people are gonna be on the right side of the new network that's changing the world. And this is how wealthy, successful people think. And before you know it, people are gonna be moving into this really, really fast. So successful people think from this perspective, this is how we need to start thinking. See you soon in the next video. Click down below.